troubleshooting AutoCAD Map 3D, importing and exporting data. My name is Katie Jakes. I'm the Global Technical Lead for GIS in Product Support at Autodesk. Today we'll be covering the top import and export issues that we run into with AutoCAD Map 3D. We'll also be troubleshooting the issues. We'll be going over things like how to resolve error messages and where to look for technical documentation to help troubleshoot. The top import export issues that we see here within Autodesk product support is importing shapefiles, exporting to shapefile format, and common error messages like you see below, which is an ARX file can't load into the, the program. How to perform an import. So the common ways to perform an import is by finding the map import tool on your toolbar. There are some restrictions when going through the import process. For example, shapefiles do not include color information. Imported objects have the same color as the AutoCAD Map 3D layer that they belong to. So any data that is brought out into the shapefile format when it's consumed inside another program will probably have to be restylized. Point symbols, line styles, and fill styles are also not maintained when importing from shape. Before the translation, you should put the items into one or more fields in the associated database so you can reassign the display properties of these objects using the values in the drawing file. Again, this will be a manual one-by-one -one process that you'll have to go through, but at least you'll have recorded and captured what types of stylization you'd like to have for those imported objects. Also note that we can import more than just shape files. This just is one of our top how-to questions that we get within product support here. Other file formats that we support are map info files, E00 files, SDF files, and other various GIS related file formats that are currently out there. a shapefile into AutoCAD Map 3D, we want to go up to the Map Import tool within your import portion of your ribbon. We want to navigate to the folder where the shapefile is located, select it, make a note that you do have different types of files down here, and the last file choice that you chose is going to be the default one selected. So it may be set to the default, which is the ASCII point file if you've never used the the tool before. Click OK. And we get a dialog box that allows us to um, identify if we are, our current drawing has a coordinate system. In this case it's a new drawing, we have not assigned one. We can choose what to name the AutoCAD layer that we're importing the data into. Remember we're taking the data from its GIS format and doing a static import into creating AutoCAD objects from it. So we can change the name of the drawing layer if we'd like to or create a new one. Um, notice that the shapefile does have an input coordinate system assigned to it, California State Plane. Uh, this is something that belongs with the shapefile. It's not something we're assigning upon import at this point. And then because the shapefile has that DBF file associated with it that holds uh, tabular information about the different features, we have the option to create object data. And it, by default, it will find the DBF file that is named the same name as our shapefile, which is valves in this case. We can also filter out what fields we may or may not want to see from within this table. Um, in this case, we'll continue to use all four fields, but sometimes these can be pretty um, lengthy with number of fields that may not be um, relevant in the process that you're using them for. We can say OK. And make a note, too, that if you're using any sort of polygon information from your GIS uh, data that was originally created, so if the shapefile holds things like parcel boundaries, building footprints, uh, zoning information, those sort of uh, pieces of data, we want to make sure we check off this import polygons as closed polylines, since AutoCAD Map 3D doesn't know what a polygon is, but it knows what a closed polyline is. So we'll do the conversion for you. We'll say OK. It runs through the process for us fairly quick, depending on how many features you actually have in the shapefile. And they should pop up here.
Performing an export is very similar to performing an import. There's a tool called the Map3D Export Tool that you can utilize in order to export out to your, your file choice. In this case, we're going to go through the shapefile format uh, to export, but there are other, other options as well, such as the SDF file format, which is an Autodesk proprietary format, E00, which is an uh, exchange file that's commonly used inside GIS clearinghouses, and map info files. Those are some of the major ones. There's other options as well. Some of the restrictions is that the shape files don't support color. So in ArcView, when you're going to bring in this data, you'll actually have to go through and assign a color um, manually to the pro in, during the process. Also, shape files do not support circular arcs. So during the export process, your arcs, splines, and ellipses get converted to segmented polylines. So you can change the settings used for segmentation. You can also do a polyline edit and change your arcs to a polyline instead, and then the export process will work better for you. To export to a shapefile in AutoCAD Map 3D, we want to go into the Output tab of your ribbon and choose the Map 3D Export feature. This is going to take AutoCAD objects and export them out to an ESRI shapefile. Choose a location to create the data in. Give it a name. And then you get a dialog box where you need to actually choose what type of object you're exporting out. So we have points, lines, polygon, and text. In this case, we're going to be exporting point features, which are these manholes. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the centroid of each of the manholes and export that out. We then can filter by layers. Um, so if in our drawing file there was more than one uh, feature that we wanted to uh, filter by, we can select that as well. We then can go to the data tab, and if there's any sort of object data that we've attached inside the AutoCAD Map 3D environment, we can go through and choose those. We're going to go under object data, and you can see that we have maintenance holes, have uh, three fields of data associated with them. We can bring those across with us. And then our options tab, we have the ability to actually uh, generate a PRJ file by just simply typing in the uh, same coordinate system that the shape file already has associated with it or the drawing already has associated with it and it will create that PRJ file upon export. And if we had polylines we were working with we would have to again make sure that we convert those into polygons um, so that other GIS programs could read them correctly. We can also back in the selection tab do a filter um, and only have to do a certain number, you know, a smaller number of features if we didn't want to do the whole area. And we're going to click OK. And it's going to export all those entities for us to a shapefile. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually connect back to those features again so you can see them in a shapefile format. Close manholes. Connect. We'll grab those in, add them to our map. And you can see that the features have now all been added. And if we look at our table version of the data, this will be all the object data that we exported out. You can see that we have all that valuable information that was associated with each, with, each, with each feature. And if we highlight a feature here, it should zoom into it for us. And you can see that this blue point is now what the feature looks like now. And I do have stylization and tools um, in here where I can create them to look more like the original block that it came from. Some troubleshooting guidelines for when you're working with shapefiles specifically during the import and export process. So things you'd like to do before you import these shapefiles is make sure you're aware where the three required files are located. There should be a DBF file, which is a database file that stores the attribute information about the shapefile objects. There's a .shp file that stores the geometry 
And then there's a .shx file that is a spatial index file that associates the DBF and the shape file. Optionally, there's a fourth file format called the .prj file. This stores the coordinate system information and is very important when you're trying to work with coordinate transformations. Things you also need to check before you go through the import or export process is to make sure that you're checking off the import polygons as closed polylines and treat closed polylines as polygons. So this is the way that the AutoCAD Map 3D system knows how to work with the GIS data that's either importing or it's exporting out to. Also be aware that the shapefile format only supports single type geometry, meaning you only have the option to export out or import from lines, points, or polygons, or text. You don't have the option to combine any of them together. You'll have to do separate files for each geometry type. Some, some troubleshooting tips for working with SDF data. So there's two types of SDF files. There's the SDF, which is version 3, which you can use to export drawing objects, which is what the, today's presentation is about. There's also another option of exporting to SDF2, which oftentimes people see quickly and just choose and don't realize that they're using the wrong file format. This imports and exports data that the previous SDF format to and from a drawing. MapGuide 6.5 and earlier require this format, so SDF2 is reserved for MapGuide 6.5 and should not be used when you're working inside Map3D to create data that you want to exchange with other, uh, other users. Also some things to check before importing an export and working with SDF files. The same issue that we ran into with shape files that treating closed polylines as polygons. And the SDF file actually supports large classified data sets as opposed to the shape file that only supported one geometry type. And all the spatial data and attribute data are in a single file as opposed to being broken up into multiple file types. Some more troubleshooting tips. Um, so a common error message that we saw earlier when trying to perform the map import command. So there's a few options of how to troubleshoot this. You can try manually loading the ARX file. So the process would be to enter upload at the command line um, and then from within that dialog browse to your installation folder which should be on your C drive. Select that ARX file and choose load and then close the dialog and try the import again. You also want to check the search paths inside the options that are set up inside your AutoCAD Map 3D program. And another option is to try logging into the workstation with different local um, Windows administrative account to test that map import command again. If the import is successful, you should log back in with your original account, do a secondary install on the program, and you can refer to the document, which is TS1085107, which you can do a search on autodesk.com for. That will walk you through the steps. And then, as, in all, as all else may fail, uh, you can always try the reinstallation or repairing of map, and that may do the trick. If you're crashing when you're trying to import large shape files, we're talking 20 megabytes or larger, you want to check your computer specs. Do you have the option to use a 64 operating system? This will definitely increase the performance. Um, also, you want to try to keep as much RAM uh, possible in your system as possible, so potentially upgrading your RAM might be an economical choice. If you're unable to export a shapefile, you could have some low memory that's due to map being open for a while, so just try closing the program and reopening it. It may do the trick. Um, you also have the option to do the map clean or audit the drawing first, then export. And another point um, is if you're unable to export a shapefile, uh, oftentimes we've run into folders that have other shapefiles already existing in them. We sometimes have issues writing to, so you may just need to create a new folder, maybe right off your C drive root directory, and try that. Also, if you're trying to export or import from a network location, um, you may not have correct user permissions, so it may be something that you need to check. Um, so again, testing it locally on your machine, right to the root of your C drive or something like that, may, uh, may prove successful, and then you can know that your path location was the, the problem. Customer error reports. So nearly all crashes should end up with a customer error report, and these are really essential for the development team so that they can actually work on the problems inside the program. Um, they do know the support requests that come in through the product support team here at Autodesk, uh, but anything that the customers can send them directly, uh, i.e. these error reports, uh, gets them that much closer to getting a fix in a faster time frame. 
These are also helpful sometimes for product support, but you need to make sure that you include your email address so that we can actually find the report within the database. So if you're trying to log service requests and need additional troubleshooting assistance, within the Autodesk environment, we have the Autodesk Knowledge Base, which has a, a wealth of technical solutions that can help you troubleshoot. We also have discussion groups. There's a new one uh, focused on installation and licensing for this 2011 launch that you may want to check out. Um, also for external sources, we have the Augie forums, your typical Google search, uh, uh, blogs, which I know there's a quite a few uh, dedicated to the map 3d tools out there and there's a new one that actually I'm hosting now called map tech that's out um, within the blogs on autodesk.com you can check the Microsoft knowledge base and there might be some local language forums and groups that are accessible for you as well so in summary today we talked about importing and exporting best practices we also talked about troubleshooting the import and exporting issues specifically for shapefiles spatial data files or SDF files, and error messages. Thank you.